doing this has helped me a lot because I, I struggled with my image as a person and getting bullied and all these different things. And now I'm using an image that helped me when I was a kid a lot to escape from a lot of things to help other people. And it feels like it's this full circle moment for me. This year, I've, I've, I've just become essentially kind of like the official Spider-Man of being able to go to the NWK. Oh, and, nice. and I'm trying to inspire other people to do the same, you know, because kids really need that. He's James Collins. He is Alec Cranston. And this is the Matter of Facts Podcast. The Matter of Facts Podcast brings you the unsung heroes, the unsung stories, news and happenings from across our wonderful city that you maybe thought happened but didn't quite know the truth behind. And get you all in the loop on what's going on, what's to come, and what can we be prepared for. Well, here we are, season three of Matter of Facts, a few episodes in, and we have a very special guest today that I'm extremely excited about. Um, We have a web of questions to ask him, and we're super thrilled. Here at the Matter of Facts podcast, we always said we wanted to go after the unsung heroes. And not only is this individual unsung, but he is truly a hero, a superhero, if you will. Just ask the kids at the IWK and the wonderful people at the Halifax Waterfront that have certainly seen this this individual and will know who we're talking about. And uh, as always, insane as the crane. Insane is the crane. Insane is the crane. Kind of insane like the crane. This was kind of a mutual decision on our parts, but the, the Northern Lights... The, the Northern Aurora Northern Borealis. Aurora Borealis. Borealis. Not boring at all. They were visible. Not Bora Bora. They were... Vi- <laughs> I wish. They were visible. They were visible. I saw photos of them scoured across Instagram and Facebook. As far as the eye could see, every eye except my own, because I didn't see them. Me but missed them too. But very cool to see that. Very cool. The what pictures, was your experience with the Aurora Barriers? Well, the uh, let, let me quickly, before we go into this, I, I did ask ChatGPT to give me a couple of lines on what it is, um, because the Wikipedia article is very technical, and a lot of people are confused. Uh, nobody really knows what, it, what the Aurora Borealis is. So uh, the Aurora Borealis Northern Lights, I'm just going to read here, is a natural light display that Alec and James will always miss in the Earth's sky, predominantly seen in high latitude regions near the Arctic. It occurs when charged particles from the sun collide with atoms and molecules in the Earth's atmosphere, particularly in the magnetic poles. These collisions excite the atoms. This is very sexual, causing them to emit light in various colors, typically green, pink, and purple. The strength and visibility of the aurora depend on solar activity and atmospheric conditions. It's one of nature's most stunning visual phenomena. And that's why I missed it. So I was having dinner uh, with my wife. I had no idea this was going on. We were in some deep uh, debate over dinner, which tends to be uh, US politics today, or obviously just around the corner from the election. And... um, then my phone, which was on the coffee table, started going which it never does. And I look back and was like, hmm, either someone's died or something's happened. I was like, my phone just a lit deal up. just blew up. <laughs> a deal just blew up, yeah. And it turned out it was my um, firefighting friends on Facebook Messenger. Everyone was outside. One person sent a photo of the of the Northern Lights, and then and I only use Facebook Messenger for that for, for, the, for these, these guys. Um, then. Everybody started posting them, but I didn't know that. I said, oh, something's probably up. I said, May- maybe someone's uh, birthday or whatever, mm-hmm. and, and they're all saying happy birthday to them. So we continued to talk for about another 30 minutes. And then I went back to my phone, picked these up, saw all the photos, jumped on Instagram, jumped on Facebook, jumped on Reddit, and saw that we'd missed this spectacle. Of course, I ran out onto my deck majestically and went, hello, Aurora Borealis. Oh, shit, there's nothing there. <laughs> oh, damn. And yeah, then so I started going. Googling, does the Aurora Borealis come back? Um, how do I activate it? Uh, and then I realized, now we've probably missed this. Now, my brother lives in Norway, gets to see it all the time, and he's always like, hey, we saw the Northern Lights last night, and uh, I can't believe the one chance... I get to see the normal How often lights. does it? Did you do some research um, on that one? So actually, the sun, is, the the way that um, it's all lined up right now, mm. <laughs> as scientific as I'll get, nice. means we are more than like we are more likely than any other time in the last hundred years to see it for the next three years. But we need a clear day. We need there to be solar storms. Uh, there's many things that yeah. line up, but the chances are we will get to see it the oh, next, cool. the next I, two I really, years or so. What's I your saw, story? I saw so many pictures. I really wish I, I, I just, it was one of those things where I just kind of got dialed in on, on my uh, on my iPad doing work stuff and hockey stuff and um, everything but the Northern Lights. And when I'm on my iPad, um, sometimes the notifications come through there, but they don't buzz or anything. 
And so if I have if I have it on Do Not Disturb, where the notifications come through there, they don't come through my phone at all. So I don't feel I don't hear a buzz or anything. So I had people text me like, "Step outside, look." Like people. So you were the same as me. Phone say, activity say, picked phone, up. Phone activity picked up. Then I go on Instagram. And I just see. And I knew it was coming because I saw like posts saying the aurora borealis. It's coming. I can't even, aurora, say say it. Aurora <clears throat> aurora borealis. Aurora Borealis. Aurora Borealis. And it was coming. And uh, yeah, I missed it. But uh, saw, a lot, saw enough pictures to make up for that, I would say. And it looked really cool. Apparently, our street had a really cool view, just the way it went over the houses. And that's like, we have a Facebook group for our street, and they set it as the new cover photo is the Aurora Borealis over one of the houses. Um, but I'll be ready next time. I'll be locked in and ready to look at the Aurora Borealis. I don't want to miss... get together and have a hug. So yeah, we we missed it. We'll we'll try to catch it next time. We have to catch it together next time. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have to try to do that. It's one of those things. It's like it's like the eclipse. I lived through a total eclipse, a total eclipse when I was in the UK as a kid, and it went totally dark for like ten minutes, and it was wonderful, and we got the day off school, and we sat on a hill. Um, but we had that partial eclipse here, if you remember last year, yep. and it just happened to, of course, be during the one week in that time of year I'm on vacation. So I was down uh, in Florida where there was about ten percent totality. Uh, you just miss those. Yeah, that sometimes. clients everybody. He only takes one week of. Vacation. He's, oh he's no! There for I, you. I I took uh, <laughs> I I proudly took like eleven weeks last year. Oh yeah, I love that. Gotta do it. You earned it. Okay, so that was the Aurora Borealis. Mm. One of our newest inclusions in season three of the Matter of Facts podcast is the Harbor of Lies. Harbor of Lies. <laughs> One of us each month presents the other one with a story that is claimed to be factually true. And the other uh, host has to ask questions to legitimize or pick the story to pieces. And then they have two decisions. It is either legit or it exists in the harbor of lies. I spectacularly got Alec last month on the story of Tuskis, the circus I elephant. I was right, though. You yes, you were. Who was who was uh, buried supposedly buried under the Barrington Street Superstore parking lot? Turns out not to be true. It was uh, a lot of BS. Uh, and now it's my turn to play victim this month. So I'm going to turn it over here to m- m- Mister Almost Married Cranston. Thank you. We're just under three months away from that. Still uh, on, by the way, the wedding. Uh, yeah, still on. As okay. far as I know, I'll check with her and see what she thinks. Yeah, just let let it, let me know by next month okay, if you can. So I know last time. I was given 10 questions. I was wondering if you think five might be better. Yeah, we'll do five. Just five questions. I think even for the, for the future ones. Okay. Game begin. So there was a veteran seafarer, and he was from Halifax, Nova Scotia. On a voyage overseas, he was in India. When he was in India, he procured a monkey, a singular monkey. Brought this monkey back to Halifax, Nova Scotia, because his kids wanted a pet monkey. As you do. As you do. So he Daddy, brought, can we have a dog? I can do you one better. I'll get you a monkey from India. So he brings a monkey back from India, pulls into the port. The monkey gets loose, starts swinging from the, the masts of the vessel he was on, jumping onto some other ships and swinging on their masts. Eventually come back to the vessel that this veteran seafarer had brought to India and brought back and was just hanging out on the masts. The port authorities were very unimpressed. They quarantined the ship for four days, for four days until they could gain control of the monkey. And unfortunately, he wasn't allowed to smuggle a monkey. So the monkey did end up going back to India and the kids did not get the monkey. Do you think that story is true or false? And you want to ask me some questions? Okay, so I will ask this to not be a question. Just a clarification point on the story. Did you say what year it was? I did not say. What year was this? When did this happen? This was 1940. This was, this, is in the, this was in the 40s. It's in the 40s. So if you say 1940, it was taking place during the Second World War. So the harbor would have looked very different and there probably wouldn't have been a ton of ton of merchant ships coming in during the Second World War. No, another issue I have with your story is why was the monkey sent back to India? If this was 1940, animal welfare was so poor, they would have just shot the monkey or destroyed the monkey in the Halifax port. Why, why did they... Do you know anything? Or can you tell me anything about... The I don't know to why get the, I, I, this I, monkey back to India. I don't know why they didn't just shoot the monkey. Unfortunately, um, from what I was told, he was con- he or she was considered kind of an illegal importation good of sorts, which was an it was an animal, and uh, he had to go back. So, but you claim in your in your story of truth that the monkey was sent back to India. He was. 
Okay, you're very good at keeping a straight face too, which which confuses me. Okay, so I was a little concerned about the logistics getting the monkey there. Also, I, I'm, I am a bit lost on why the ship was quarantined for four days in order to sort of subdue the monkey when there was tranquilizers back then. They could have probably tranquilized this monkey in a matter of minutes uh, and, and gained control of it and not needed to quarantine the ship. Because I don't think you quarantine the ship. You quarantine what's on the ship. Do you yep. have any any information? Everyone had to remain on the ship for the for the quarantine. The main the main issue that I know about was that they didn't know what sort of diseases or such that the monkey might have had that they didn't want to get on shore and onto Halifax. So they quarantined the ship, prevented it from from getting on on land. The overall the overarching thing was they didn't want to harm the monkey. They didn't want to have to do anything inhumane to it. Nah, see, I think they would have back then. So how do you first learn about this story? How do you first learn about this? Is this something that your dad told you? Is this, this something story you was read? This story was told me by somebody. Who? Like, tell me about how you learned about this story. What, how did it come into your life? Because it's now in my life. Uber driver Todd told me the story. And, and Todd's a pretty upstanding guy from what I hear. He is. He told me the story. He so is. this is a father-to-son story. Father-to-son story. Mm, which is, you know, I can see some merit in because uh, my father told me different stories growing up because I grew up in Wales. So I, I wouldn't have been told a story about a bullshit story about a bullshit monkey. Um, but no, I'm, I, I'm undecided as of yet. So I, I can see some merit to that. Yeah. Let's talk about the seafarer. Who is he? What was his name? What's his background? You know, clearly he's he's important enough to have this story. T- tell me about this seafarer. The seafarer's name uh, was Alexander Cranston. Okay, my great grandfather. Your great grandfather. Okay, was a veteran seafarer. That's oh, this has added another little thing to this. He brought the monkey back for his children, aka my dad's grandfather, my dad's father. Oh, okay. This is playing games with me here, Mr. Cranston. Because I thought you were going to stumble and be like, oh, his name was uh, Johnny Seafarer and uh, he was... He's an actually who I'm named after. So you were named after a man who smuggled a monkey. Smuggled a well, monkey tried to. into Halifax. Oh, I've got one more question here. Um, I, I suppose... like I, I just never knew that this was in your background. So let me do this then. Convincingly tell me about your grandfather because you would know a lot about him. I could tell you everything about my grandparents' lives. It's my great-grandfather. Great-grandfather. So tell me... Uh, who he worked for, what he did, what the lines of business were, why he went, like, just give me a, a, a 30 second thing on him and don't say I, because because you clearly were told this story. So you would have some good information on it. Yeah, I was told the story. I wasn't told a lot of details about my grandfather, Ale- uh, great grandfather, Alexander. I know they called him Papa and his father's name was also Alexander. It's funny, funny story. He had, a, he had a brother also named Alexander. We had, there was three Alexander, two Alexander brothers and then a, another father. So a great, great grandfather. It's a very, that name gets passed along a lot in my family, and now I'm happy. And it's my dad's middle name, and now I have it. Um, what well, happens kn- when mail arrived for Alex? What? Alexander Cranston. The whole family just went, Ooh, this mail could be for anyone. <laughs> who, who is it's this? That's your Nova Scotia but power bill. Di- different guys went by. Some guys went by Sandy. Some guys went by went by the full Alexander. Some guys went by Scotty. Like, they did these different weird ways of doing it, but never met any of them. Um, I don't know a whole lot of details about what my great-grandfather did. I know he worked on ships most of his life. I know he was a fisherman for a, a good period of time, um, but he was a deckhand for many years. Then he kind of became in charge of some vessels, which that was this one here. Um, but that's all I really know is that he worked on... And then on, he smuggled a monkey. He smuggled a monkey. Okay, for the sake of needing to come up with, a, with, a, with an answer, I'm actually going to say this is true. It's true. It's true. It's true. Oh, it is true. true. Oh, it is well true. done. Okay. It is true. This is a family story. Um, that uh, my dad had told me, but yeah, my great grandfather Alexander, he, they, my dad's grandfather, Papa. The, the funny part with this story, and I'll, I'll be quick, is um, is oh, 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 oh. over the, over the years, the like they keep they kept like different generations kept exaggerating it, and like you'll you'll find out now factually, you just brought in too many cigarettes. So so no, but in terms of number of monkeys. So oh. it was exaggerated. Like so, when he first told the story to like his kids, it was exaggerated. And they for, and then they the brothers they all exaggerated it. And then my dad he exaggerated it. And then we had to get down to the truth of it because I had my dad help me with this last night. We had to get down to the truth of it. We have a family historian essentially, a guy that kind of tracks everything. And because the story had, had stretched to the point where it was fourteen monkeys, that's where it got to. But then we had to fact check it yesterday, and it was only one. Only one singular monkey that made it back. Well, it's a wonderful story. It's and good... you actually had me on the BS route until you said 
your great grandfather. I know. I, I so and I, then I, I was like, because mm. I couldn't tell if like, you were like, because with that, it's either I'm telling the truth, it's a legit family story, or I'm just really messing you and just saying, yeah, it's my family. I'm named after this guy. I'm named after the monkey no, man. No, no, you were convincing. Good. Yeah. So, so Harper of Lies, we're uh, we've we've each had a go. We've both been right. Yes. Uh, we'll see what next month brings when I test Alec. But now we need to go to something that is equally as fascinating uh, as a monkey, yeah. um, a, a spider. Cool. Uh, we have a superhero, and he's just walked in, or, or what is he doing? Uh, Backflip. He would, he would swing in. Swing in, okay. He tried. Like monkeys. Hey. Uh, let's just chat to him. Come on. We have a very special guest with us today. We have Spider-Man, a.k.a. Peter Parker, a.k.a. Halifax's Spider-Man, a.k.a. Isaac Healy. Hello. Welcome to the podcast, Spidey. We Thank really you appreciate so much. you coming here. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is quite the visual guest. We were just saying this, uh, guys, before we, we came on air here, that we've had some amazing people in our guest chair over the years. We have never had anybody who looks quite as bold as you, Spider-Man. Thank well, you so much. Well, what do I refer to you as during this interview? Uh, Spider-Man's good? Yeah, Spidey. Okay, good, Spidey. Uh, Spidey. 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 So we're going to just set some context here, too, which is Alec is a diehard... Marvel fan. Um, I will admit, I I grew up in a household where I was sheltered from that world. Not not entertainment in general. We we had a television and we would go oh, to the you're movies. Into that stuff. It's fine. But I I I have not ever seen a Spider Man movie, cartoon, read a comic. So this is why this I know right. This is why this works this well today. Because we got a we got a <laughs> die absolute diehard obsessed fan in Alex. So this is going to work well because you have the knowledge. I have some of the more um, naive questions. That's perfect. That's perfect. Uh, so welcome. Thank you. Really happy to have you here. I guess my first question to start it off is, I mean, tell us a bit about kind of yourself and what got you into into doing this and being Halifax's Spider-Man. Of course. Yeah. So uh, my name is Isaac Healy, if anyone doesn't know. Um, and uh, I started being Spider-Man around 2020, but only really started going out in 2021. I've been a diehard fan of Spider-Man for my whole life uh, and went through a lot of surgeries, went through 15 surgeries when I was a kid uh, in the IWK Children's Hospital and um, was born without the top of my skull. It's called a cutis plasia. And going through all the monotony and pain of a, of a surgery life as a kid, it kind of, you know, I, I remember I was introduced to this character. He's very vibrant colors. And then I realized like, you know, he's just a kid that's going through normal life and has a very relatable story and um, it kind of inspired me to do what I wanted to do ever since high school I've always wanted to do this the whole moral of it was to go and visit sick kids in the hospital and then it kind of turned into this whole other thing uh, essentially of going around Halifax waterfront which is awesome yeah because I've, I've I've seen you downtown several times and it's and it, I think you must you might have multiple suits do you yeah I've multiple seen suits. suits you got this one on today which I really like that one thank that you one looks really good yeah it's like the ultimate suit with um the uh, amazing spider-man 2 colors essentially in patterns so oh, very nice very nice yeah. so very nice. correct me here you guys uh you're aware of what the Mandela effect is yes yeah I've been in Halifax for 15 years and I have a memory of seeing spider-man on the waterfront over a decade ago is that a false memory uh i'm there was actually someone that used to do that um and he actually has an account named halifax spider-man mine's hfx spider-man i've been trying to get in contact with this person because I, I want them to be able to come back out i think it would be a really cool thing to see that uh you know i saw this a long time ago and that it kind of inspired me to be able to do this and what i'm doing now and there's multiple people that go out now you know, there's Smokestack Spidey, there's the Niche Spider, there's like all over the place. There's so many people that are going out and doing these things. And yeah, I mean, it's it's been a thing that's been going on for decades, but I guess okay. for me, it's it's I started doing it full time. Like I did it for three years, basically like almost every day I could going around the waterfront and just talking to people. And it's been really cool. So that's good. So I'm not crazy. I mean, no, I'm crazy, no, no. but not crazy in that respect. <laughs> um, the answer I'm hoping you were going to give is is your grandfather was Spider-Man, and then your father was Spider-Man, and then you were sat down, your grandfather sat you on his knee when you were about eight, and he said, Isaac, yeah. the expectation is you're going to the family business. I, I wish that was the case. That would be awesome. But in a way, that's kind of what it, what it was like. My dad introduced me into the comics, and he was the one that kind of inspired me to to do this in the first place. He said, you know what, go and get a suit. And, you know, the moral that was there was what kind of uh, made him want me to do this, which was surprising because, you know, usually parents aren't very supportive of these kind of things. But uh, my parents have always been pretty supportive. And my dad actually wants to come out at some point dressed in a full Batman garb because he loves Batman as well. 
Um, so that would be awesome. Just Batman and Spider-Man. Yeah, going yeah wonderful. Suit. Before you start actually doing this, were you already collecting the suits? Or were you, do you make some of your suits too? So um, I'm going to be starting to make suits uh, this year. Uh, I'm I'm actually like in the midst of learning. And there's a whole like syndicate of spider people, I guess, that people that dress up in Spider-Man cosplay that are around the world that kind of share ideas and how to make suits and how to, you know, do all this stuff. And for me, when I started actually getting into it, I met this guy named KJ Spidey on Instagram that uh, sent me my first suit. Oh, uh, nice. Literally just randomly, never asked anything to this day of me. And uh, it inspired me to kind of get into it and uh, understand more about how it all works. And now I have like seven suits. It's crazy. So That's unreal. Yeah. Uh, and so you must see a lot like being down at the waterfront and the kids must love it when they, yeah. when they see you. Yeah. Um, have you, met, you must have met some interesting people. Like, I mean, just with the different famous people that have come through Halifax and, and they stay here, they film here. For uh, sure. Who would you say would be like maybe the coolest person you've met by well, doing that? Well, recently this year I met probably the most famous people I've ever met in Halifax, which is kind of crazy. Um, and uh, so one of them was Ra- Raul Kali. He was like in uh, Midnight Mass. Yeah, played, like, the, yeah. The he's awesome. Police guy. He was really, really nice. I met Billy Boyd, which yeah. is kind of crazy when I was out with uh, Smokestack Spidey as well, um, which was insane because my girlfriend just came down from Oregon and we were watching all of the Lord of the Rings movies oh, just really? like a week before we met him which was kind of cool so Halifax is amazing now like there's like so many filmmakers and coming in and uh, it's a really good great place for film right now how much time like typically will you if you go down to the waterfront say on a nice day um, you know day like today maybe a bit warmer how long will you spend down there uh, upwards of two hours to nine hours depending okay. on how things go if I have time like I usually try and take as much time as I can to, to soak it up because you never know when you're going to get the suit back on again in, in this kind of weather and climate that's and, a good point you know life can come in you know I, I also have a life outside of Spider-Man which yeah. is kind of it, it's interesting how like there's like you know with the comics and all that stuff like how there's always this duality of trying to balance life and the and it's the same thing for me now because of the nature of what I'm doing and I find I'm trying to be better as a person outside of the suit as well because you know there's eyes on me when I'm doing this and I don't hide my face as much yeah. anymore so yeah I love how you found like the the relationship between I mean obviously like you said you haven't really read the comics or or watched much but as someone who has you've really embraced kind of that actual persona and what he stands for and what he does rather than just, you know, you're not some guy wearing a suit having fun. You're really embracing, you know, like you said, what inspired you to do it and why you're out there still doing it. And you sound like him. Like everything, oh, you. Ev- everything, your, ma- your <laughs> mannerisms and everything are very much what you You are starstruck right now. <laughs> I am. I, when I, I actually, when I first walked in, I was like, oh my God. Like I felt like he was sitting right there. <laughs> I want to whip my camera. He was, he was. He was. He was. So I just think, I think that's really cool. And, uh, I'm sure that must lend to when you, especially when you're visiting kids at the IWK and you're in character. I mean, yeah. You, oh, you, know, yeah. You're, you're, you feel like, you probably feel like you're less and less acting and more so just being yourself. At this point. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's, you know, a lot of people say have come to me with so many nice messages and it's, it's, it, it never gets old yeah. like because I, I, I realize where I've come from and I try to be as, you know, as aware of that as possible and not let it kind of get to my head in a way. And, yeah. And um, in a way, it's doing this has helped me a lot because I, I struggled with my image as a person and a lot growing up and, you know, getting bullied and all these different things. And now I'm using an image that helped me when I was a kid a lot to escape from a lot of things to help other people. And it feels like it's this full circle moment for me, which is really, really nice. And the fact that the IWK has taken a liking to what I do in any kind of way after having so many surgeries there and that I get to help out in any kind of yeah. way is it's it's really what I've been striving towards, and I, this year I've 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 just become essentially kind of like the official Spider-Man of being able to go to the NWK. Oh, nice! And, mm, and I'm wow. trying to inspire other people to do the same, you know, because kids really need that. Yeah, absolutely. And so, so what is a typical day for you? I I see your work is multifaceted, and I'll be honest, and I think it's wonderful. I I wasn't aware of of the work you did with the IWK, and and that's obviously a very admirable dimension of of what you do and, and your passion. Um, you've got the two distinct seasons. You've got a, a tourist flooded waterfront in 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 the I call it high high season. Uh, we're now moving into off season. So, what what does a day look like for you in those two different? times of year yeah so it's different every year i find um and i'm still like kind of in an infancy of like trying to figure out my business and what i'm trying to do here and 
And uh, a lot of it kind of comes down to like doing a lot of private work, like doing uh, like biz- like uh, birthdays and visits and stuff. And the new additive of being able to go to the hospital a lot more now, which is really, really great. I'll still go out sometimes. It just depends on like usually I'll wear a sweater or the suit or something that would like Peter Parker would wear. Um, so kind of like looking kind of more like schoolish and and. Uh, usually what I'll try and do is I'll still try and make video content. I may not go out as much, but I'll try and like push as much content as I possibly can out on, onto like Instagram and TikTok and stuff. And, uh, I'll, I'll also like stream with the suit on, like, cause I stream on Twitch. Um, so I'll do a lot of fundraising stuff throughout the, 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 uh, winter, but I'm excited for this winter because this is, this is the most, um, that I've ever had opportunities in doing this yeah. in, the, in my three year run. So I'm thinking that it'll probably end up just being a lot of like private events and like, you know, I also have suits for specific occasions. Like, so uh, the Parade of Lights, like I'll probably be in that again this year. And, oh, no, you were in that last year? Yeah, oh, which nice. was an interesting experience. I learned a lot from it. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it a number of years uh, with my wife's last job. I've, I've probably done seven or eight years where I've been on those floats. Oh, wow. And um, always the coldest night of the year, I find, to date. <laughs> it there always is. seems to be some effing chilly night that we yeah. end up doing it yeah yeah i uh i definitely last year when i did it i felt like my feet were floating like i did because i you know i didn't put enough socks on under the suit and stuff and you know we don't i don't really have like the warmest shoes under this yeah. um or anything so lots to learn especially Actually, let's talk about that for a second if you don't want to go into this you don't have to because i want to preserve your image um but i don't see your lips moving right now and i know that you're definitely talking so so what what am i looking at you've, so you've got the this suit is, this is funny this is some tidbit for for also you for someone that hasn't watched any spider-man movies as well like and this is also for people that do watch spider-man movies a lot of people don't realize is that um the actors what they have is is called a face shell so it's this almost like a hockey mask type thing it's okay. actually really hard, um, and it's it's made out of usually often 3D printed, and um, the fabric goes over the mask or over the face shell, and then the lenses magnetize onto the the uh, the face shell over the f- fabric. So when he's taking off his mask, it's actually kind of CG. What they'll do is they'll usually take off a fabric mask first, and then they'll do uh, the the one with the face shell, so it's kind of synced together. There has to be something under what I'm looking at right now. Yeah, it's so, not skin so, skin tight pulled up over yeah, the... Yeah, so, so I wear what's called an undersuit, essentially. Okay. So I wear a dancer's belt. And then I wear basically uh, like a almost like a lycra spandex black uh, full body suit that's under this. Okay. So it keeps the longevity of the suits. Also keeps me a little bit warmer sometimes. And um, and then I just wear this over it, essentially. And in the, in the suit, there's like a, uh, what they call Kung Fu shoes. So it's like almost like loafer shoes that are inside of it. Uh, oh, okay. So like Love it. There's kind of a lot of damage on these suits because, you know, I've, I've been doing this for so many, so many years, but and then it's like a U-shaped zipper. So that goes around the back. So it'll go from my armpit to my other armpit. And that's... And you can do this yourself? Do you need help or you just, just do So that? starting out, I did need help. Um, but I've gotten a lot better over the years uh, with doing it. And um, there's different tricks, like not putting the zipper up all the way. Having, you know, wrist zippers helps because you could take your gloves off really quickly. And um, usually I would have web shooters on, but... Um, unfortunately they got stolen oh Um, no really that's also another thing that like a lot of there's a lot of things that i go through as spider-man in that i didn't expect to go through like Uh, negative things from everything from being punched in the face to like the gut to like uh you know having things stolen people almost like trying to gang up on me and stuff like that over the three years but grant granted it hasn't happened a lot uh which is good in the three year run, I've been pretty lucky in that regard. Most people have been pretty supportive and everything, but that's also partially my fault. I don't recommend people do what I what I do. I, I would always go out at night too. Okay. So like for right. events and all that stuff. So you'd be around like a lot of drunk people yeah. not really knowing what to expect and things. So I don't recommend, like we have a rule now when we're going out, like, cause I have a group of people that mm-hmm. also do the charity work and everything now. Uh, we don't go out at night essentially um and if we are going to go at night have like a big group of people and like friends that are around you a handler of some kind because i did this alone for like three years it's one of those things that can definitely scare you (laughs) away from doing this Mm -hmm. kind of thing but um it's what you know the the moral of it helping kids is what kind of it's the side of it that people don't see right like you don't and then the fact that you're still continuing to do it knowing that 
those things have happened and the risk may always be there. But now you, like you said, you've learned from it and you, you know, the way you schedule things and the exactly. way you work with your people and your, your spider verse. Spider verse is the, is like the term for all the different spider men. Okay. And different okay. universes coming together, all different suits and colors and there's abilities. all sorts of different, yeah, spideys now. It's, it's pretty great. Um, which is pretty cool. Like it makes it easier for me too, because like mm-hmm. a lot of kids are like, why are you doing this? Why can't you use your webs? Why can't you do like a flip? Because I'm still learning to do a flip and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. All these years later. That's what I was gonna um, ask you. Is like if like what? How do you approach when a kid asks you to do something you can't do? So there's multiple ways that you can do it. Um, for me, a lot of the time it's like spin your webs. It's like oh okay, well my web shooters are either broken or they're not working right mm-hmm. now. Because before I would usually have web shooters. I have another set that's coming in that actually like sprays like water and oh, stuff. Cool. It's 3D printed, which is cool. Um, but, uh, you know, another is like climbing on the wall. Like usually I'll just say like, listen, I, I don't, I've been on better terms with the police right now. Like I don't want to yeah. <laughs> ruin any of the buildings that are around here. Yeah, and... Don't good. climb on the wave because the sign says so. It says yeah. do, not climb. do not climb. So, so the thing that's, that's great. That's the biggest thing is like do a flip because like yeah. in the movies, you know, that guy. There's, do yeah, a flip. yeah, exactly. There's a classic scene where someone asks Spider-Man to do a flip. He's like, to, just to prove that he's Spider-Man. And so now everyone asks me to do that throughout the years. That's just always how it's been. And I've come up with different responses, but the biggest one that I find gets the, that gets people like laughing or off my back, like the quickest is, no upside downies after eating, essentially. So like, I'll just say like, oh, I'm sorry, I just ate. That's good. Otherwise, I totally would. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, that's that's a that's a good rebound for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, actually, I I gotta come find you once I get. I ordered a. Um, you might have seen it, but Marvel Legends released uh, the Green Goblin mask. Yeah. And the pumpkin bomb. I have the Goblin mask ordered. That's awesome. It'll be here December fourth, and I'm gonna. You know the I'm, date. You know the date. Oh yeah, I, I checked every. I check every like couple of weeks to see the update on it because it's coming. It's not released Actually, yet. Actually, I've got. I've got your update here. It's uh, cancelled. <laughs> oh come on! I'm so sorry, ex- Alec. I'm, it's it's a wedding gift to myself. I had to get. Sorry, Jenna. But um, <laughs> no, we always say we should love ourselves. Once so. I, it's like authentic. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna come find you, and we're gonna get a picture. I gotta get a picture. With yeah, one hundred percent. I get, but I gotta get the rest of the costume. Yeah, I really wanted it for Halloween. I really was hoping I it just that wasn't awesome. released by then. I was that's what I was gonna ask you too. So, do you find like some of the holidays, you're you get higher requests to to do things like on Halloween and Christmas and yeah, stuff like so that? Yeah, so Halloween there's like a lot of really cool events that happen in the city. Like there's Treat Accessibly, which is um, basically this uh, it's a newer event that's been put on to try and help people like kind of trick or treat accessibly. Mm-hmm. So like teaching people like different ways that you know, you can make it more accessible for yeah. kids with disabilities and stuff. So they get me to be there almost every year. And, you know, like Halloween, there's always like stuff going on and people always want me to be around in the city. Sometimes it's like a scavenger hunt for mm-hmm. people. Like sometimes I go out at night just to like, you know, I'll have, I have a symbiote suit as well. I was going to ask you that. <laughs> um, So like I'll go out and doing that. Christmas, you know, Christmas is a big thing. Like, yeah. and I think this year, like I'm probably the most known that I've ever been with what I'm doing, which yeah. is awesome. And I, I love that because I just, mostly because I just want to bring people smiles and I want to, I want to help people. And, yeah. and uh, the more that I get to do this, the more that it fills my cup and makes me feel good about what I'm doing in life. And, and I've always wanted to do this kind of thing. I've always wanted to help people. So yeah, um, yeah I guess, you know, it's, it definitely picks up around those times and the holidays and stuff. So. No, that's awesome. I think you've got that good mix. And I mean this with sincerity of it's a passion of yours. Thank you. It's a living. You're making money. We, we're we in real estate. I get up every day to make money, don't you? I do. I don't get Let's go I and try. help some people do real estate I at try. the goodness of my heart. <laughs> and, and also you've got the charitable side too. So, yeah. you know, you've got sort of everything that people want in their life. They want to fill the lead, the one side of the ledger to do good. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. They want to run it a bit dry, making money on the other side. You've got a good balance and that, that must feel satisfying. I'm sure. Oh, for sure. Like, and most of the money that, uh, that I make in any kind of, and I never ask for it either. Like, that's the thing. Like if it's, if it's for a private event, it may be a little bit different because mm-hmm. it's like, and even then it's still a service. I'll talk to the families and just say, Hey, like, provide what you can if, and if you can't sometimes i'll do it for free depending on the because it's, it's meant to be a service and that right. an active service in the end of the day the for the most part all the money that i make uh or a lot of the money that i make in the in the summers from donations and stuff go to charity in the first place so um for example there was a charity event that i did a 24-hour stream for where we made we raised um in canadian three thousand six hundred sixty six wow, and 24 dollars uh, which is insane and um i donated like two hundred dollars to um 
to that charity. So it's it's one of those things where it's like I love giving back with this with this money because it's going to a good place and um, it always goes towards the NWK or Canadian Blood Services or any of those mm-hmm. things that I can think of that can help people so medically. So I love what, the IWK piece. Keep going, but sorry. I love the IWK piece. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think yeah. I think that's Thank you. you know m- more than we do in our life as well. It's um, it, it definitely very admirable. Uh, but what is your what is your job when people ask you? So you're you're down in uh, you're in Austin, Texas, and you run into someone <laughs> like uh, are you an entertainer? What well, what are you? It's, so um, I mean that with love. I don't yeah, mean like, what are you? What, who do you think you are? Who do you totally think you are? Yeah. Like how well, how, how do you very, wrap this uh, up into something? So I would say um, I'm more of like a it would say I would say it's an entertainer and charity like uh, like organizer. So like I help okay. with like organizing certain charities and being involved with with them and how I can uh help with those pieces uh, of the pie uh but mostly just entertainment uh just bringing people smiles and uh, you know giving an escape even if it's just for a second uh, i love it it's it's a great it's a great time i never expected at 28 that i would be here doing this like yeah which is and let alone people taking a liking to it and i appreciate you guys also just like for allowing me to be on here it's, absolutely it's, oh it's yeah it's insane yeah. that i've even that people have even liked what I do. So thank you. Well, this, you know, you're very welcome. And thank you for coming in. This is what we do on the podcast. So we, we part of our thing is the sort of unsung heroes of Halifax, who everyone sees or knows about the work they produce, but we never get to talk to them. Right. Obviously, you have interactions with people. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure they're brief, particularly in the summer when there's lineups and people just want to have their moment yeah. with you. you you're, you're not going to talk in, in the depth that you are with us. So yeah. we like to give people that um, that platform here. And, that's awesome. And, uh, yeah. So, so where do you go from here? That, that's my next question uh, probably my final question with this coming close to time is um before i throw back to alec is what what's next um so i'm hoping that i can continue my work with the awk i just want to elevate that as high as i can go um in the next coming years and uh i you know the the biggest thing that i would say is i want to get a better suit i want to have the most authentic uh experience for for people as i can i, I can do and i want to continue my work with streaming uh i hope that at some point maybe i can uh, finally, you know, uh, start working at the AWK full time because yeah. uh, that would be my dream as well. Like I, ever That'd since I was awesome. a little kid, I've always want, wanted to work as a medical staff there. So that would be really great. And, uh, you know, maybe do some traveling, go around to some events and see the world. And, you know, I've already been to Oregon a couple of times. My girlfriend's from there and she also dresses up as Spidey now. She dresses <laughs> up as Spider-Gwen, which is Gwen Stacy, which is uh, that's cool. Peter Parker's like kind of main one of her, his main squeezes, and she ends up being Spider Man in another universe or Spidey in another universe. So, yeah, I just want to do more events and keep doing what I'm doing. You know, I got t- two quick nerdo questions just to know. Of course, uh, what's what are the other suits that you have? Which ones are they, and which ones are your favorite? So this one is probably one of my favorites. Like I have multiple duplicates of this suit, um, just because I love the Ultimate comics. Um, I have another one that's just like a classic, like the classic um, Amazing Spider-Man run Mm -hmm. uh, suit. I have the ultimate symbiote suit. I have one that's Cosmic Spider-Man, which is one that I don't Mm -hmm. really wear as much. There's so many. That's like, there's so many to go. Like, yeah. my favorite, one of my favorites would be like probably the original Iron Spider suit. That's what I was going to go for. Not the one from like Infinity War and stuff, but like the original one with the arms. The red and gold, yeah. I love that suit. I would love to make a good suit of that at some point. That's the suit I always play as on uh, Marvel's Spider-Man. Another on-the-spot question. I mean, I got to ask any Spider-Man fan that obviously likes the movies and the show and the the cartoons, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, or Tom Holland, who's your favorite Spider-Man? So... Uh, this is going to be a bold take for a lot of people. Ooh. Andrew Garfield is my favorite. Just okay, because, no, that's that's a good one. Just because, like, I grew up, I was going through high school when that was coming out, and, yeah, and and it was kind of, I was going through my own, my own like coming of age story. You know, I was like taller and lankier, and like yeah. kind of fit more of that build of what that that's I mean, pretty good shape like. today still don't yeah. worry about that thank you <laughs> so much um but yeah i uh i just i i don't know it's just something that i that i felt more akin to in that character but i love all of them all of them are great i, yeah. I love doing the watch parties for all of them too like with with my community it's, oh, it's a nice. great time so so toby andrew or, or tom if you guys are watching this or hearing this we're open to having uh multiple spider-man all oh, at yeah. once no, you're we welcome can... to come and join isaac we can all be here together easily <laughs> said if you're listening to this you yeah. can you can come anytime we can't pay for your way here but i'm sure you can help <laughs> yourself um but we're getting towards the end of our time here um so i think this would be the best time to use for you to kind of just 
uh, one final plug on, on what you're doing, where people can follow you on socials, uh, how to best get in contact with you for your private events as well. Sounds good. Yeah. So uh, I would say the best place to get in contact with me is uh, is uh, HFX Spiderman, which is my uh, Instagram. And just in case, because I did get that account taken down um, a long t- or a while while ago last year, and then I just recently got it back. But I have a second account, which is HFX Spider, just in case that happens again. Uh, HFX Spider-Man, pretty much on everything. And then if you want to see what I do kind of on the side, which is uh, my streaming uh, on Twitch, it's odd underscore angles. Yeah, and I also have a booking form as well. You can see in my link tree in my uh, bio on Instagram, there's just all sorts of different things that you can uh, look at there. So yeah, that's that's my kind of shtick. That's what I'm up to. Just don't mention Uncle Ben keep that one quiet everybody oh. for those who don't see what i mean see what i mean i've upset him i shouldn't have did that is that, is that a uncle, ben, uncle ben's part of the spider-man lore it's kind of funny made sauces uncle ben's uncle oh, what? <laughs> the bread guy yeah, no the uh pasta sauce maybe uncle that's just ben in the was uk Peter parker's uncle that you know he he unfortunately dies in the comics and, and oh. most of the comics in the movies it's what inspires him to kind of become yeah. a hero okay. and kind of blames right. himself i got so much learning to do I know. You I've should, lived a shelter life. I would, I would be so <laughs> excited if I, if I was you and I hadn't watched any of it. Oh, and I man. could go back and watch it all over again for the first what time. I would do. We appreciate you coming in, Isaac. This was this so was much. wonderful. And this pleasure. was a big moment for Alex. So when we, we strategize on our podcast um, and Alex suggested you as a guest, it clearly was extremely excited. So you've made a uh, a man's uh, week here as well. So thank Absolutely. you. Seriously, you've thank made you my very day. Much. Seriously, anytime. I'm happy to be here anytime. So, awesome. Thank you. Let's get some photos. Thank you once again for tuning in to the Matter of Facts podcast. But you can get more of us. You can subscribe on any good podcast provider. You can follow us on Instagram at Matter of Facts Podcast. And for all that great feedback and abuse, you can send it by email to HalifaxPodcast at gmail.com. And of course, you can always find James Collins and I on the internet. Please do get in touch and we look forward to seeing you next time. You've been listening to a Podstarter production. Podstarter production.